Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! I, Zerzeron, champion of the Four Realms, remain undefeated in battle. Any who dare to cross my path signal their willingness to face me in combat. Ah, wonderful! A new challenger has arrived. So it begins. I am Xerxeron, champion of the Four Realms. Who dares to contest me? Out for tacos. I suppose I can crush their skulls and hang them by their entrails another day. Good morning, craters, and a special good morning for those of you joining us live via the YouTube premiere feature. If you missed it and you want the chance to interact with myself and Adrian as you watch the next episode of the Saturday Morning Tutorials, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. And if you hate the YouTube premiere feature, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Action! You guys, Erzeron was shot on a green screen, and that's because we're going to need to make use of her outline, and this way we did not have to rotoscope her. Boo rotoscoping. Boo rotoscoping. To get this epic panning up motion, Chris shot her on a jib while she slowly rotated her body. There's nobody there. This is fake behind the scenes. Don't trust everything you see. Question everything. We placed some lights slightly behind and to the sides to give her a nice little hair light that goes all the way around. These lights had amber colored gels on them to give them some really nice golden warm coloring. We then had Adrienne crouch off camera and shine two flashlights onto each of her hands to add some extra realism and glow. Can you give me a hand motion? Like a <laughs> flick your hands out. Yeah, exactly. Ideally, these lights would have been blue, but even though they are not, the rest of the lighting is so warm that they look cooler by comparison. We also hit her with a leaf blower like we usually do for these dramatic energy shots. This really gave her that cool, powerful look. She was shot this way to mimic a specific shot from the Captain Marvel trailer. If you want to shoot a similar shot, you might just get lucky and find that the 3D camera tracker in After Effects works for you. It is not designed to be used this way though, so if it doesn't work for you, don't freak out. You can just do a couple of point tracks, track a few points on your talent's body and hands. The bits of snaky energy stuff that move around Xerzeron's body were made with the turbulent noise effect. Just make a new comp and add a new solid within that comp. Apply the turbulent noise effect to it. You can customize this however you want, but in our case, we changed our fractal type to turbulent sharp. We turned the contrast up to around 450, and the brightness we keyframed to get brighter over time. We unchecked the uniform scale checkbox so we can stretch out the width, giving us those long tendrils. We also keyframed the offset turbulence to move across the screen from left to right to give us this cool directional motion. We added a turbulent displace effect over this and pretty much just left it on its default default setting. This gives us a bit of extra motion to our animation. We also added a second turbulent displace effect and this time turned the size down really small. This gives us some fine electric detail. Finally, we added a black solid over top of all of this with some feathered masks around the edges. This will make compositing this layer a little bit, a lot of bit easier. In a comp with your tracked actor, drop in a bunch of copies of this noise. Since we know that the noise is flowing from left to right, we can rotate these comps around to get the energy to flow in any direction we want. In this case, we're gonna want these to flow outward from her torso and down her arms into her hands. Make sure these are placed with purpose. That's right, not porpoise. I said not porpoise. Oh. You can apply a mesh warp to some of these if you want to have more control of the overall direction. You can set the rows and columns down to something like one or two. Any more than this is gonna be overkill. Now that we've got the energy flowing the overkill. way- Overkill. 
Now that we've got the energy flowing the way that we want, we can pre-compose it. We want to go ahead and make it so the energy only exists near the edges of Xerzeron's body. So we need to make a mat. Make a new copy of your actor's layer and apply the following effects. Apply a fast box blur set to around five or so. Apply a curves. Here you'll want to set the channel to alpha. The line for alpha is black, so it's going to be a bit hard to see here, but you want to make a new point in the middle and drag that up to the top and then grab the point that was already at the top and bring it to the bottom. This is going to give us an outline. Add a tint effect and map the black to white. Add a matte choker and bring the choke one and the choke two both all of the way down. Buy a glow. The way to get natural looking glows is to stack a bunch of copies, each one a little bit wider than the last. Apply a set matte and set this layer as its own source, which it should be by default. Uh, and this will cut out the edges, leaving a really nice soft inner glow. Add another fast box blur just to defocus it a little bit. Add a solid composite and change the color to black to bring back the alpha. Finally, a curves to tweak the brightness. Now we can use this layer as a luma mat for the energy wisps. Pre-compose those and add yet another solid composite effect. Jeez. Because, yeah, I know. We need the we need to get that solid alpha channel back. Now add a curves and bring up the red and the green channels to get this cool, or should I say warm, <laughs> uh, yellow, orange, goldy coloring look. We can actually go back to that wispy comp and grab a copy of the map that we just worked so hard on and tweak the settings a bit to make it a little bit less extreme. Try adding a turbulent noise to it and setting the blend mode to multiply and then animating the brightness and contrast of that noise over time to get some cool animated energy. Or should I say warm? We actually used several instances of this technique, all with slightly different settings and colorings. This is a great way to get some depth to our effect. Looks good. Uh, so what's up? What What's your deal? I am Xerzeron, the champion of the four realms. I crush skulls, and if I don't crush them, I wear them around my neck. That's pretty messed up. I know. The energy on the hands is a clip from footage crate called Blue Gas Flare. We have both free and pro options. Everybody's happy. Track these in and set them to an ad transfer mode. If you're interested in a slightly different look, check out our cool Scarlet Witch tutorial. Or should I say warm? <laughs> <laughs> For the glowing eyes, we did use some practical lighting. What we did is we had one of these can lights or work lights. These are real cheap. And we had it hooked up to this dimmer switch. That way we could control the brightness of it. So as her eyes start glowing, we get more of a light cast on her face. You're like a little egg hatching. What? <laughs> <laughs> Incubator. Incubator. Oh. Yeah, we can never emphasize this enough. A little practical effect to add to your visual effect always goes a long way. The glowing eyes themselves are surprisingly easy to make considering how cool they are. Draw an ovular, Warm. or should I say, draw an ovular mask roughly around your actor's face. Right click it, select track mask, and change the method to face tracking detailed features. Once that track is done, make two new nulls and copy and paste the right pupil and left pupil data onto the position property of these nulls. Hey, what rhymes with pupil? Nothing. Make sure that you have the position property selected when you paste, or else you're just gonna be adding a track point to the null rather than moving its position, and that would not be useful to us. Make a new white solid and parent it to one of the nulls. Draw a mask around the actor's eye. You might need to animate this over time, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Feather this mask just a touch. Now draw a second circular mask directly around your actor's pupil. Friends with Drupal. I stand corrected. Set a keyframe for the feather and the expansion and bring the expansion down so you can't see the white anymore. Loopal? Move forward in the timeline and bring the expansion and the feather back up until you get this nice soft eyeball look. Now repeat the process for the other eye. Scoople. The flares on these eyes are just black solids with a light sweep effect and a mask to feather out the edges. These are parented to the pupils and their scale is animated to grow over time. Just like we all do, really. Just like babies. Pre-comp all of the eyeball layers, add a solid composite to give us a black background on these, and color them with the curves just like we did before. Put those on a screen or an ad transfer mode. Over top of everything, we added a real lens flare from Footage Crate. There's over a hundred of these to choose from. The reason we chose to do this is because everything else in this tutorial has been CGI, so adding something that is real helps bring it back into the real world just a little bit, helps sell the effect. 
who dares to contest me like a little um I am Zezeron. Zezeron. Get that out of my face. Get that out of my face. <laughs> Guys, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, we appreciate you. Let us know in the comments below who do you think would win in a fight? Zerzeron or Thanos? Ooh, yeah. I'm talking a fist fight. No weapons. I'm talking a brawl. Yep. No, no time infinity limit. gauntlet. To the death. Who would win? Yeah, oh, I love that. No home court advantage. Just a straight up brawl. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> fight. Hey, oh, I have a note here. Adrian, actually. Oh, yeah, you got, you got a little reminder in your pocket? Hey, can you read that for me? What does that say? What does that say? Please remember to remind everybody to make it awesome. Actually, it says, uh, don't forget to buy eggs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were doing a thing. <laughs> Subscribe to Production Crate, or I will personally see to it that your ancestors be dug up and mutilated again in front of your own eyes. If you like this video, you might like that video. There's also a bell down there. Press it or you'll meet your demise.